Well, good afternoon. Uh, last time we were together, we were gone from a cotton seed to a mature cotton plant. And today we're gonna start with that mature cotton plant that's ready to harvest, talk a little about the different methods of harvest and then what happens to the cotton after we get finished harvesting. So if you can see here, we have a cotton plant that has been defoliated. The leaves are pretty much off of it. All of the bowls are open and, it, and it's ready to be harvested. Uh, there's two different forms of harvesting cotton. One that we call stripping, which basically comes in and it will strip everything off of this plant. And the other form is called picking and a picker will come in and just simply pick the, the cotton out of the burrs and leave the burrs on the plant. Two different forms, one stripper, one picker. We do both, both of those here in Southwest Oklahoma. Most of the irrigated cotton is picker harvested most of the dry land cotton is stripper harvested. So two different forms, we utilize both of them. If we look at this row, this is a, a row of cotton that has been harvested, it's been stripper harvested. You can notice that, that all of the bowls are gone, all of the burrs are gone, all of the leaves are gone. Stripper came in here and simply just stripped everything off of that and left the stock standing. All right, so now we've got this cotton at the gin. It's ready to go through the ginning process. This cotton right here is what we call seed cotton. If you feel it, you can still feel the cotton seeds that are in it. You can see some of the leaf that's still there, some of the burrs that are still in it. And, and this is the ginning process is the actual removal of the lint from the seed. And it's the process that Eli Whitney created over 100 years ago, pretty much the same way we do it, that he did it then, we do it today. It's just bigger and faster. So this seed cotton, it takes anywhere from about 1,200 to 1,800 pounds of the seed cotton to make a 500 pound bale of lint cotton as we go through the gym. So we start the ginning process with seed cotton. We separate the seed from the lint through a series of saws. This is just lint cotton. You feel it, it doesn't have any seeds in it. It's just pure lint. It does still have a little bit of leaf in it and a little bit of trash in it as we go through that, but this is the lint. And this, this is the most valuable product that comes out of the gin is the lint. Everything that comes out of the seed cotton has value. The lint is the number one value. So as it's going through the gin and process, the lint goes one direction, gets pressed into a 480 to 500 pound bale, and that's the most valuable thing. Seed, which is what we're removing out of it, goes the other direction. You can see that seed still kind of fuzzy looking, still got a little bit of the fiber on there. That seed also has value, primarily used in livestock feed. Uh, dairy cattle really like it. It's a really good feed for beef and dairy cattle, high protein and high in energy. A cow will eat that seed just like this. No further processing is required for a cow to eat it. That also has value. Then we get into a product that we call moats. And if you look at the moats, they're pretty ugly, pretty nasty, but this is actually lint. Uh, a lot of immature lint, uh, a, lot of, a lot of trash that gets put in there. Moats is used in, in stuffing. It does have a little bit of value, not as much as the lint does, but it does have some. That's also pressed into a bale and, and sold separately. Then we get into what we call gin trash or the burrs, and that's everything that doesn't go into the lint bale to the seed or to the moats ends up going to what we call the burr box or the trash box. It's burrs, it's sticks, it's immature seed, it's, it's a little bit of lint, but this also has value. And one of the common practices in Southwest Oklahoma through the years has been to take a, a truckload of the burrs and dump out in your pasture for your cows to eat. There's just enough cotton seed in there that they'll get a little nutritional value out of it and, and a little bit of flavor to make them want to keep eating it. And it's a pretty good way to overwinter uh, a beef cow is just simply on those burrs. Uh, there is some people that take them out into West Texas, grind them and put them into a ration uh, to, to feed in the feedlot. So we've gone from seed cotton, we got our lint, we got our seed, we've got our moats, we got our burrs, Everything that went into the gin came out of the gin, and we've gone from a seed to a bale of cotton in just a few short minutes. 
So when we harvest cotton, whether it's a stripper or a picker, uh, the most current, most recent way to harvest and most of our harvest, and we end up with what we call a round bell of cotton. As you can see, there's a lot of sticks and burrs in it. This is a stripper harvested uh, bale where everything came off the plant, went into the machine. Some of the burrs are removed in that stripping process and put back in the field. But as you can see, this is a, oh, probably about a six foot tall bale of cotton. There's about three to three and a half bales of cotton in this one round bale. We'll talk a little more about that in a little bit. What's really unique about this form of, of, of putting cotton on a turn row, when we harvest cotton, it may be four weeks to six weeks to eight weeks before it can get to the gin and be ginned. So it's important that we protect this cotton when it's sitting out here in the open. And as you can see, it's got a yellow wrap, uh, plastic wrap all the way around it that basically protects this cotton and everything except this very end, protects it from the wind protects it from the rain and, and other elements. So this is a, a really, really good way to store cotton to wait uh, for the ginning process. When this cotton is ready to gin, a big truck will come pick it up called a module truck. It'll back up. There's four of these round bells stacked together to be a module. And as, a, as the truck backs up under this, it will literally kind of lift and pick this up into the truck and, and take it to the gin uh, for the next step of processing. 